Well, let's start with WWE, and this is a story that put a smile on my face this week. WWE made it official that Saturday night's main event is returning. We heard about this many weeks ago. It was WrestleVotes, actually, that was the first to mention the possibility of this happening. But it was made official this week, live on NBC and simulcasting on Peacock. December 14th, it will be a two-hour special from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern from the place where it all began, the site of the very first Saturday night's main event in May of 1985, the Nassau Coliseum on Long Island, New York. As uh, MJF would say, the most magical place in the world, only not. Uh, this is part of the company's five-year media rights deal that they signed with NBC Universal for SmackDown. And if you recall, the deal called for quarterly primetime specials on NBC, so four per year. Uh, they put a video out for it earlier in the week. I, I was all up in my nostalgia feels. I mean, right down to them using Obsession by Animotion, which is the original theme song for the show. It is still a badass song all these years later. Uh, I don't know if that means they're actually going to use it again as the official theme song for the show. I hope so. Uh, I'll tell you what, though. I would be okay with the instrumental theme that they replaced Obsession with from 88 to 91. That's a bitchin' theme, too. I might even like that one more. I don't think they're going to use Take Me Home by Phil Collins, though, to close the show like they used to. Tickets went on sale on Friday. The show is already nearly sold out. Less than 1,000 seats remain from the initial allotment. That's nearly 8,000 tickets. That building fits a lot more than 8,000 people. So I am sure that, and they do this with WWE and AEW now, where they'll op only open up a certain number of sections. Once they sell that out, which they will here, uh, they will open additional sections. I'm sure by showtime, that building is going to be packed. But this takes me back, man. This takes me back to my early wrestling fandom. Like, this is when I became a fan. It was in the Saturday Night's Main Event era. And for those of you who were too young to have known about it, or if you weren't watching wrestling back then, and you only know it from the cable era and from what it is today, you know, Saturday Night's Main Event was a big fucking deal back then. It really was. The, it was the precursor to the pay-per-views that we have today. Rarely would you get to see big matches with the big stars on the syndicated shows on the weekends. Uh, that's what Saturday night's main event was for. And Hulk Hogan was the face of that era. It's why Hogan was so big. It's why Hogan is still a, a pop culture name even today. Right? Vince was going national. He wanted Hogan to be the poster boy. So he brought in Mr. T to be his partner. And they hosted Saturday Night Live together. And they launched WrestleMania together. And Hogan was the one that people tuned in to see, you know, and whenever they would have these specials at 1130 at night on those weeks when SNL did not air, Saturday night's main event would air in its place. It was a 90 minute show. And you saw Hogan. You saw him defending his title against Terry Funk and defending against Paul Orndorff or Orndorff, as Hogan always called him. The famous cage match where they each climbed out at the same time, hit the floor at the exact same time. Uh, Hogan's match with Harley Race, you know, where Race took that table bump on his belly that basically ended his career. You got the cage match with the Big Boss Man, where they did the superplex spot from the top of the cage. They ran that spot almost nightly in their matches on all the house shows. To see them take that bump on TV was incredible. You know, how often back then did Hogan leave his feet? How often did Hogan ever leave his feet? Yet he still ended up with 10 back surgeries. But I think back to other big moments, you know, when I, when I think back to that era. And, you know, technically, these did not air on Saturday night's main event. It was, it was a special Friday night edition called simply the main event. And the main event had three shows, one in 88, one in 89, and one in 90. I think they were all in February. And I think those were the only three. The one in 88 had the Hulk Hogan-Andre the Giant rematch from WrestleMania 3 and had 33 million people tuned into the show, which is a record that has not been topped since, and it will never be topped. Not on lineal TV, it won't be. But that's where they shot the twin Hebner angle. Andre won the title, only to surrender it to Ted DiBiase. That set the stage for WrestleMania 4. That was also the first sighting of the Winged Eagle belt. Even though the pre-match promo had Hogan in the back with a completely different belt. 
<laughs> the one that he had been using for years. Then he walks out to the ring and all of a sudden he's got a brand new belt on. That's how they debuted the Winged Eagle belt. That was always very weird to me. But that's one of the all-time great wrestling angles. You know, the Mega Powers, they were formed on Saturday night's main event in 1987, but then on the main event in 89, the Mega Powers, they broke apart. Another famous angle where Miss Elizabeth took a bump, a rare bump by Elizabeth that led to all kinds of drama and Savage attacking Hogan. Yeah, they use these shows typically to set the stage for WrestleMania that year. But these are my earliest wrestling memories as a child. That by the 90s, the show's audience had started to dwindle because television was changing. There were more pay-per-views. There were bigger matches to be found on those shows. So Saturday night's main event did not mean as much as it used to. It didn't really serve a purpose in the way that it used to. 91 was their last year airing on NBC. Then they aired two final shows in 92. And it's hard to believe, given all the big matches that took place on the show, you go all the way back to 85, but in all those years, only one singles championship changed hands in the history of Saturday Night's main event up to that point, and it happened on the very last one that aired on Fox. That was when Shawn Michaels pinned the British Bulldog to win the Intercontinental title. And that was the last time that we saw Saturday Night's main event on TV until 2006. 14 years later, they resurrected the show on NBC for five episodes between 06 and 08. The very last episode had a main event of Edge against Jeff Hardy, which you know sounds like a match that you could have seen on any given episode of Raw or SmackDown or any given month on pay-per-view from that era, which is why if they're going to bring the show back, I think they need a big main event to kick things off. Like, imagine Roman Reigns getting his rematch with Cody Rhodes on that show for the WWE title. Roman Cody 3. Or even better, Randy Orton against Cody Rhodes for the WWE title. And Orton wins the championship, and then Cody has to chase him into 2025 to get it back. He doesn't, ha he doesn't have to win the Royal Rumble again, because winning it three straight would be ridiculous. But that would be one way to make a big splash on that first show. They have no PLEs scheduled after Survivor Series until the Royal Rumble. And the Royal Rumble next year is not until the first day in February. This is going to be the first ever February Royal Rumble. So that leaves nine weeks between PLEs. So Saturday night's main event and that first Raw on Netflix on January 6th are going to have to fill the gap. May as well take advantage of that NBC audience and give people something to remember. If it's not a big match, then a big angle. Because the history of that show is littered with big angles. And as they add two hours of programming once every quarter, if Wrestle Votes is to be believed, starting in January, WWE is going to be adding another hour of programming in the form of a third hour of SmackDown. This is my nightmare come to life. <laughs> 